These are the third set of notes for chapter 9. This is on how to do simple monohybrid crosses using a Punnett square. By the end of this slide show, you should be able to predict the genotypic and phenotypic ratios from a monohybrid cross. Punnett squares are used to predict the results of a genetic cross between two individuals, and they work using the principles of probability. You probably know these already, but I'm going to review them anyway. Alleles are represented by letters, such as capital letters and lowercase letters. The capital letters stand for the dominant allele, and the lowercase letters stand for the recessive allele. Some general guidelines to keep in mind, if you find yourself choosing your own letters to use in a Punnett square, please remember to choose two letters where the capital and lowercase letters look very different. For example, don't use C's because the letter C, um, it's very difficult to tell whether it's capital or lowercase, especially some of you that don't have the best handwriting. Quick review on homozygous and heterozygous. You know what the prefixes homo and hetero mean, but you may not know what zygous means. Quick review. Zygous is referring to a zygote. What's a zygote? I'm glad you asked. It is the result of an egg and a sperm fusing together. So it's that initial cell that will soon grow into a baby. It's called a zygote. So when we're talking about homozygous, we're talking about an individual or a cell that has two identical alleles. When using the term homozygous, be sure to clarify whether it's homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. Heterozygous is when the cell or the individual has two different alleles for one particular trait. All right, why are Punnett squares divided into four squares? And the reason for this is that in meiosis, there are two possible alleles, one from your mom and one from your dad, for every gene, and they end up in different sex cells. So in our example, we are going to use earlobes. Attached earlobes, as you can see here, are attached to the side of the neck, where free earlobes, you actually have a true lobe here. Free earlobes are dominant over attached earlobes. So here we have a homozygous recessive mother with two recessive alleles. Our father is a homozygous dominant and has two dominant alleles. Filling in the Punnett square is fairly easy. We'll start with one letter and we'll move it across or down into both boxes. So this F, we will move into this box. We will move another one into this one as well. This one we will distribute into each of the boxes also. Then you bring the lowercase letters down. This represents the egg and the sperm fusing to create a child. So these four boxes represent the possible combinations that can exist between this mother and father. So these are the possible genotypes of the offspring. So, what do Punnett squares tell us? They can tell us the genotype and the phenotype of children. In the genotype for children, we create a ratio. The ratio, in this case, is four of the children will be heterozygous, zero will are something else. 100% of the children will be heterozygous for this trait. The phenotype of the children, if free earlobes are dominant and the children all have one gene for free and one for attached, the phenotype will be free earlobes at 100%. Let's take a look at another cross. 
Here are the parents. They're both heterozygous. So we're going to distribute this parent and this parent into the boxes. We'll call that the mother, this one, and this one we'll distribute over here to be the father. We'll bring this F down and this one over. We'll bring this F over and this one down. This box will bring this F down and this one over. And then in this one, a small F down and a small F over. It's generally accepted that you write the capital letter first. So let's talk about the genotypic ratios. We have two capital F's, which represent a homozygous dominant. How many homozygous dominant individuals are there for the offspring? One, right here. How many individuals are not homozygous dominant? Three. So the genotypic ratio is one to three. The percent out of the four, one is homozygous dominant. So that's 25%. You could think of these as quarters that will add up to 100. Homozygous recessive. There is one that is homozygous recessive and three that are not. Heterozygous individuals. There are two that are heterozygous and two that are not. We'll reduce that two to two to one to one and it's 50 percent. Now let's look at the phenotypes of the children. How many of these children will have free earlobes? One, two, three. How many of these children will not have free earlobes? Only one. So 75 percent, three out of the four, and a three to one ratio. How many will have attached earlobes? Just one, this one. And there will be three that do not have attached earlobes, and that's 25 percent. There's a practice problem worksheet on my website. If you would like to download it and try it again, feel free.